the plain truth about the attack on the 23rd on the five villages that uh, were attacked on uh, on Saturday night we make calls even the STF commander was fully informed he did not send his men there what he told us was his men are already there when I went there I saw about four civil defense four uh, mopoles there was no any military man on ground of the truth and all of these eight people are of the same religion. They are all Christians. And if you see the way they suffered, my brother, you will pity for them. In every attack, I get information two, three weeks before it happens. And mid immediately I get that, I try to alert the security personnel to a point in time I was blamed that I'm the one foiling the crisis or the attack. How do I know it? Sometimes they insisted I must tell them the name of my informant and where he's coming from. I said, no. And even the connivance between them and the government, they tell me. So when you put the message across, the government doesn't take it serious. And most especially this administration, his, the, the governor's aide doesn't even pick calls of anybody. Even yesterday night, I tried calling the governor on the attack going on on Doroa. He didn't pick my call. So the, the missed call is there. He will not reply. Sometimes his uh, PA will send, give you a message noted, and it is gone. Even at the heat of the crisis. So you call the, the STF, the, their spokesman will tell you they are not aware, and it goes. And most especially, the attack is perpetrated by this uh, 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 military men. They aid them in carrying the attack. So we always give information before it happens. The CIB, they, they, they are everywhere and they bring information. But the most painful thing is that the people they are giving them this information are part of the attackers. And they will not even want the police commissioner to know about it. Neither. They will send it further for, for further investigation. They don't. They don't allow it to go. So they must remove those that are on those decks so that information will flow. So when we were on our way to go and recover these cops, the corpses and the injured, the same STF commander, with the advice of Brigadier General M.A. Bello, told him that we should not pass through. And he was the one that called the defense headquarters and the CDS told the, 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 the SGF commander, Major General Anthony, that he should not allow anybody to go and carry any cops. He did. He delayed us for two and a half hours. The police that was given to us to assist us with about 13 operational vehicles, that's helots. He couldn't allow us to pass. It's security versus security. So they had to turn back and go back to their base in Barakin Ladi. So from there, I insisted I must go because I can't allow my people to just die like that without any burial. So I I forced myself in with some few people with me and we entered. Immediately we get uh, approaching the villages. We started seeing the Fulanis grazing on the farm that is already uh, 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 being wheat and then planted. They were grazing on the farmland. We have the videotapes and everything. Then about five or three meters away, we started seeing some decomposed cops in the bush along the road. That was when we started piling these dead bodies. And finally, in Ngar village, we recovered about 78 dead bodies, apart from the missing one. Our reverend, Reverend Vincent Bukar, 
was recovered on the 25th of June 2018. And then in Ganarop, we recovered 33 dead bodies. In Ruku, we recovered 38 dead bodies. Gindi Akwati, we recovered 40 dead bodies. In Barik in Ladi, we recovered two dead bodies. In Kaikai, we recovered nine dead bodies. In Shonong, Iriam local government, we recovered nine dead bodies. And in Nyer, we recovered 86 dead bodies. And all these villages, we have the names of those that were killed, even children of two months, four months, and one year were macheted. What kind of a human being is that? So, some of them were supposed to survive because they didn't give them any helping hand to take them to any hospital or any clinic around. They died. That is from the information I got from the, the House of Lani community there. So for that, the military, the STF completely, they did not give any helping hand to anybody. I'm saying this, I can defend this in any court of law. Well, the, the state governor, his lapses. So he doesn't care about what is happening to us. He is always in Abuja. He is always with the president. So we don't have a governor on the plateau. I'm saying this without any mixing of words. My name is Jerry Datim. He can say anything. We don't have a sitting governor on the plateau. He has no role to play. He is loyal. His loyalty is to Buhari. So we don't have a governor. I'm saying this without any contradiction. Presently, presently, we have lost nothing less than or more than uh, 87 villages to the Flanes completely. No, no indigent, no landowner is living in those places. Mind you, in part of the uh, local government, the Fulanese told the, 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 the landowners when they went to farm that, uh -uh, what brought you here? Who gives you this land? They said, it's my own. They said, my friend, will you pack and go or else we kill you here? And the old man and his wife refused to go. They killed him. The same thing in Bokos. Nine villages raided. Up till now, no indigenous has gone back to that place in Dafo. And they are planning to take over Butura. Very soon they will take over. Yesterday night they have taken over Doroa. They extended to Maraban Kantoma and then Jakatai. So if really the, 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 the federal government wants peace, for us to live in peace, they should ask these Fulanese to vacate those villages that has been taken over by them with immediate effect. If they really want us to live in peace, they should ask the Fulani to vacate all these places that they have occupied that it has become their territory. We have one traditional ruler who is take, taking care of us, who is our voice, is Aka, uh, Aku Uka of Wukari. But the rest... We don't have uh, traditional rulers. I will say this without any mixing of words. Reason is because they have been politicized. They go along with the gov government of the day. And they are all under Buhari. He gives them instruction. He paid them their salaries. And that is all. We are no longer important to any traditional ruler on, on the planet Earth. Those that did the killing, as I told you, the burial that took place in Gar, which I did, I officiated the burial, it was the same Fulanis and the, the Hausa community within there that helped me in digging the grave. And they know the perpetrators. They know them. They, they saw their guns. And nobody was arrested. But for some of our boys who were carrying cutlasses, they were arrested. So you cannot arrest a, 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 a militia that is trained by federal government. You can arrest them because they are the ones that send them. Like Meduguri, Borno, Borno and uh, uh, Yobe, Adamawa, they have civilian JTF. Can you arrest a civilian JTF? You can't. So they are part and parcel of the, 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 the military. So they, they, you cannot touch your, your, your colleagues. But the soldiers can arrest, they can harass police. But they cannot harass the felonies. Everybody knows that the military are part of the problem. If they remove security, if they remove the STF or JTF, wherever they are today in this country, 
we will live in peace. Some of the security agencies, they were the ones that reliably informed us because they loaded these things in their presence. And these uniforms are already in plateau. And they are with the Fulanis. I will tell you that General, Brigadier General Bello was the one that went to distribute this uniform. Ho -ha! He used his military helocks to disburse these uh, a, a, a uniforms in those villages that were attacked on Saturday and Sunday and that of yesterday night, Monday night. So General Bello is fully aware. If he can be arrested and then questioned, he will tell them where he kept the uniform and how he distributed them. Whenever they come, any commander that come here, he is coming to make his billions and go away. The Fulanis are giving them cows. I remember my, con uh, my, 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 my uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, my contact with uh, T.C. Ude, General T.C. Ude. He detained me for five weeks. He collected cows from the Fulanis. The day he moved the cows from Plateau to his village, that was the day I made my call. And he was retired. Voluntarily, by force. The same thing all of them are doing. They will tell you they are Christians. General Anthony is speaking with the Sultan. He takes directive from Sultan direct. Because Bello is here on a, on a mission. What kind of a country is that? People, the whole world have spoken about... The, the combination of the uh, army chiefs. But Buhari is not giving us consent. So he is here to actualize Islamization of Nigeria. But let me tell you, whosoever is listening to me, there will be no 2019 in Nigeria. I'm not prophesying. There will be no 2019 in Nigeria. The blood of those four months, three months, uh, children that were shed in Gar and other villages, it will go back to them. All of them will pay for it dearly. Very soon, Lalong will get his own share by the special grace of God. I am not God, but God is still at work. If the God of Moses can lead the children of Israel to cross the Red Sea, we still worship that God today. We will cross the Red Sea. Lalong is counting his days. Whosoever is with him should repent and then turn over so that we can forge ahead. God bless you.